When it comes to the most prominent names in African-American literature, one name that stands out the most is Audre Lorde. Lord was alive at a time when several social changes were happening. Gay liberation, civil rights, second wave feminism. And as a black feminist lesbian, who better than Audre Lorde to voice all those experiences, both in her poems and in her numerous literary essays, where she explored turning silence into action. Lord believed in the power of language, and it could be used to empower the downtrodden. Honestly, how could I not cover her for Black History Matters Month? Audre Lorde asserted that there was nothing romantic about her experiences as a black lesbian woman in an America that was just getting its head around civil rights. Born Audre Geraldine Lorde on 18th of February 1934 in New York City, she was the youngest of three daughters to parents who had immigrated from the Caribbean. Lorde was severely nearsighted, nonetheless she excelled at school and could read and write by the time she was four. It was at this age that she stopped writing her first name with a Y on the end. Though Lorde's Grenadian mother would tell her stories about the West Indies, both she and Lorde's father were more dedicated to their real estate business than their children, and as a result, Lorde had an emotionally distant relationship with them. Introverted, she would find the best way she could express herself was through poetry, claiming that she even thought in poetry and communicated in poems. Her unusual behaviour made her an outcast at school, but she found camaraderie with other fellow outcasts. At 15, Lord wrote her first poem, Spring, which was later published in Seventeen magazine after she graduated from high school, presenting the intensity that adolescence brings to infatuation. She would demonstrate in her later poems an authenticity of intimacy and social life. She initially wanted to publish it in the school's journal, but they rejected it on the grounds that it was too inappropriate. She attended Hunter College High School, which was one of the best schools in the United States. Meanwhile, she joined the Harlem Writers Guild, but felt that she was not accepted by the other members, believing they perceived her as a crazy queer who would grow out of it. Lord studied at the National University of Mexico for a year. It was here that she fully identified herself as a lesbian and a poet. She would later describe her experience as a time of renewal and affirmation for herself. When she returned to New York, she finished her studies at Hunter College and graduated in 1959. During that time, she worked as a librarian and was a frequent participant in Greenwich Village, which was a thriving hotspot for gay culture. After graduating, she attended Columbia University for her master's in library science. She continued to work as a librarian between studying and writing. Lord married Edwin Collins in 1962, though he was gay. They were married for eight years and had two children, Elizabeth and Jonathan, and they divorced in 1970. While Audre Lorde was not present in New York when the Stonewall Riot of 1969 happened, as she was in Mississippi as the writer-in-residence of Tougaloo College, she was nonetheless a supporter of the move to recognise LGBTQ plus civil rights. In Mississippi, she workshopped with black undergrad students who were equally eager to discuss civil rights. Lord found her experiences at Tougaloo just as formative as her time in Mexico, where she wrote a collection of poems that were published in the book Cables to Rage, and started to consider her crazy and queer identity as a badge of honour. There she met Frances Clayton, who taught psychology at the college, with whom she had a romantic relationship with until 1989, though they remained close until Lord's death. Between 1972 and 1987, Lord was living in New York on Staten Island. She claimed to be addicted to writing and was regularly invited to speak at academic conferences and gay marches. Lord was one of the co-founders of the Kitchen Table Women of Colour Press, which was closely related to the National Black Feminist Organisation, which her friend Barbara Smith wished to create, to provide a voice for black women rather than hope that the other publishing houses, commercial or independent, would give the writer a chance. It was hard for black female writers, especially LGBT Q plus writers to get a voice as publishing houses tended to be white male dominated. A year later, Lord also co-founded the Women's Coalition for St. Croix to reach out to survivors of domestic and sexual abuse. Her outreach to black women across the world went as far as South Africa, establishing Sisterhood in Support of Sisters, which aimed to help women suffering under the cruel system of apartheid. In 1984, she came to West Berlin as part of a visiting professorship. She joined a group of Afro-German activists, a term which she coined, and raised awareness of intersectionality reality. In 1978, Audrey Lord was diagnosed with breast cancer. While undergoing a mastectomy, she wrote the Cancer Journals, which documented her experience. It won the Book of the Year in the American Library Association Gay Caucus Awards. 
Baud would still continue to write, even when the cancer later returned in her liver. In 1991, Lord was made the New York State Poet Laureate. By then, she was living in St. Croix with her partner, Gloria Joseph. A year later, on the 17th of November, 1992, Lord passed away as a result of her cancer. Even at the end, she classed herself as a warrior, naming herself Gamba Adisa in an African naming ceremony, meaning warrior, she who makes her meaning known. Audrey Lord has appeared in documentaries both during her life and posthumously. Before Stonewall, Emergence and Arena featured her being interviewed, and in 2012, Audrey Lord, the Berlin Years, was made in her honour to credit her contributions to bringing awareness of inclusivity and intersectionality to the Afro German community. The legacy that Lord has today is as one of the faces of fighting racial and sexual prejudice using the power of the written word. In New York City, the Colin Lord Community Health Centre was established to offer primary care to the LGBTQ plus people. And this is just one of her many posthumous honours. The Audrey Lord Project is an organisation in Brooklyn that aims to peacefully promote activism for people of colour. In Chicago, Illinois, there is an outdoor display dedicated to LGBTQ plus history, which Lord was added to in 2014. Lord was one of the most important poets and scholars of the 20th century, representing women, African Americans and the LGBTQ plus community, which were three main groups that strove for inclusion throughout that century. She lived and wrote during a time of great social change, capturing the voices of the times. It seems that an on-screen incarnation of Audre Lorde is long overdue, but its success would be dependent on how well the creators understand Lorde's personality and the full meaning of her works. Such an interpretation cannot be done lightly, and those behind the camera would need many a creative consultant to make sure that it is the best it can possibly be. I doubt Lorde herself would settle for less than perfect. Honestly, I really enjoyed Audrey Lord's stuff. I have one of her books that I came across by accident, which is how I discovered her, called Your Silence Will Not Protect You. And it's a collection of her poetry and some of her literary essays. And you just start reading and you cannot put it down for a moment. You have to remember that the lesbian gay girls, because that's what we would call the gay girls population, was a reflection of what else was going on, right, around us. And that was the era of, let's pretend this is the best of all possible worlds, this is exactly what we choose, right, and this is it. So, like, nobody talked about racism. So next time on Black History Matters Month, we'll be looking at the footballer Justin Fashionu, and I'm going to say footballer, not soccer, because he is British. So we'll see you next time. Please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, because it really does help this channel.